Right guys, uh, just to going to do a video today, uh, we're going to talk about um, what we can put in uh, our greenhouse and our polytunnel in July. Because uh, we're coming up to July now, so um, we'll discuss this and see what happens from there. Um, I'm going to show you guys, this is the end of June at the moment. Um, you see that? Beautiful weather. Uh, it is absolutely chucking it down. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so I want to sit in the shed here and uh, we'll have a bit of a talk about uh, what we can do with our polytunnel and our greenhouse today. Uh, oh, sorry, June, uh, July, sorry, because we're just at the end of June now. Uh, I'm rambling on a lot at the moment, just uh, bear with me because this is only my second video so I'm not too uh, great with the talking on video um, but yeah uh, some of the jobs that we really need to do in the greenhouse and uh, and a polytunnel if you've got both um, I do have both I've got a greenhouse and a polytunnel um, but uh, what we can do in both or either um, what we need to do this month in July is um, we need to water more regularly than, and more he more heavily than we usually would. Um, obviously because the weather's going to get warmer. Um, so we probably want to do uh, watering like three times a week. Um, maybe more if it's hotter. Um, and also um, make sure that our greenhouses are and polytunnels are ventilated. Um, Try and leave your doors open if you can, um, if it's safe to do so. Uh, leave the doors and windows open until um, late evening. Um, and also maybe uh, leave your window open um, overnight if you can. Um, I mean, my greenhouse, my windows open most of the time, 90% of the time during this time of year. Um, and also we want to be harvesting more regularly um, from our greenhouses and polytunnels because we want to we want to harvest when plants are ready, not when we want them, because it's going to allow us to um, prevent diseases, and it's going to make sure that the plants are actually able to produce more fruit, um, especially like your tomatoes, your aubergines, your um, courgettes, cucumber, um, and your chilies and peppers and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be able to actually get more from them um, and uh, yeah so just harvest when your fruits and your vegetables are ready rather than actually uh, waiting until maybe you think that you need them um, also um, we keep an eye out for pests this month in the greenhouse uh, things like greenhouse whitefly um, aphids, we need to keep an eye out for red spider mites and also your usual suspects, slugs and snails and just see what we can do um, to keep on top of that. Um, what else is there? Yeah, keep your weeds down if you've got a polytunnel which is on uh, just on the ground. Um, mine, I've actually put a uh, weed membrane um, all over the all over the floor, and I'm using raised beds and put and uh, crow bags rather than actually using um, the ground itself. Um, so I've not got such an issue with that. But you do want to keep weeds down because your weeds will compete with your crops for nutrients and everything, and also. Um, it will create a damp atmosphere and um, that's obviously going to lead to uh, could lead to oh my god that could obviously lead to um, diseases and stuff like that with your plants in your polytunnel or even in your greenhouse because I've seen some people do have greenhouses which are on the ground as well um, so keep on top of the weeds and um, because obviously also they can reduce the airflow between the plants as well, which isn't obviously isn't a good thing either. Um, and also, well, 
we need to spray susceptible plants with um, either a garlic or seaweed spray. Um, now, I've not had an issue with aphids so far, so I've not had to actually do anything um, with this. But uh, we should be spraying them every seven days if you've got a new, if you have got a problem uh, or you have got plants that are susceptible to aphids. We want to be um, we want to be spraying them every seven days to uh, sort of try and keep away the uh, aphids and that is a garlic or a seaweed spray um, you can make one yourself I guess um, you can probably buy them from uh, your local uh, DIY gardening shops and stuff like that um, now um, there's things that we can be doing now I'll show you using one of these it doesn't have to be a propagator one uh, but we're using the uh, seed cell trays um, we're going to be using these to actually uh, be planting some of our plants that are going to go into the greenhouse um, as I say it's July well, it's, it's nearly July so we shouldn't actually need the uh, the propagator top um, on these we should just need the actual seed cells themselves um, what we can be doing is we can be planting your calabrese or your you know your, your not your sprouting broccoli it's your normal broccoli just uh, that and we would put one seed per cell into one of these these seed trays um, again the same with any Chinese cabbage we can do exactly the same thing one seed per cell uh, Florence fennel also uh, you pak choy if you like pak choy you want to grow pak choy again one seed per cell um, we also have this month we can be putting in uh, French beans again uh, we can put five seeds per nine centimetre pot um, I don't actually have a nine centimetre pot on me at the moment all my pots are either in the greenhouse or uh, in the other shell at the other plot um, but and yeah a nine centimetre pot um, and you can put five seeds per pot for your, your French beans there um, lettuce now lettuce is one thing with a polytunnel or a greenhouse lettuce is something you can grow pretty much all year round um, and again we're using your seed trays you would want to be put in about between one to three seeds per seed cell um, or per cell on the tray um, and then you've also got things like your oriental brassicas uh, we can be putting five seeds per cell with those and then your spring onions you can put into your seed cells as well uh, your, your seed tray cells um, five to ten seeds per cell um, depending on how much you like really in a bunch on your, uh, your spring onions um, what we want to be doing is harvesting courgettes and um, cucumbers uh, this is what we want to be sorry I do apologize uh, we want to be harvesting courgettes and cucumbers uh, twice a week at this time of year if you've put them in earlier and you've got them coming towards being um, ready for harvest then you want to be harvesting your courgettes and your cucumbers two times a week and you also want to harvest your tomatoes your peppers and your aubergines and similar things like your chilies and stuff like that once a week um, if not your plants can get exhausted and they can get diseased and it also it will give them more opportunity to grow more um, and produce more fruit um, and probably larger and better fruits it's my first year actually properly growing with a greenhouse and a polytunnel so this is just a lot of research that I've done um, into a lot of stuff so we'll, we'll try a lot of this um, we'll try a lot of this out really got a really loose now there um, we just it's just a lot of trial and error stuff at the moment um, with a lot of this but we will actually be getting um, a lot of the stuff out um, and trying to uh, trying to follow a lot of the research that I've done now if 
you have been sowing and you know you know that you've sown a lot of this stuff and we do do the seed trays um, in the modules or pots um, we can be stuff that we've got in in the last four to six weeks that we've planted in the last uh, sown in the last four to six weeks can actually be going out into your beds in your greenhouse or your polytunnel um, yeah I say probably what's been sown in the last four to six weeks um, things like basil Chinese cabbage coriander dill chervil uh, courgettes your cucumbers your French beans and you can grow your French beans in your polytunnel um, or you can actually harden them off and put them outside um, same with your courgettes and some of your cucumbers your, your outdoor cucumbers um, also things like Florence fennel lettuce as I said lettuce we can grow with, with a polytunnel we can grow lettuce pretty much all year round um, the only time that the greenhouse and the polytunnel will be empty uh, for myself would probably be during December which gives us a good chance to clean it out give it a good clean give it a good wipe down get the outside cleaned off and make sure that it's all okay and I do apologize keep putting my hand in front of the camera there um, and also uh, yeah things like your, your oriental stuff again going back to the pak choy uh, you, you've got parsley you can be putting into your beds if you've got that in in the last four to six weeks uh, you've actually sown that in the last four to six weeks um, and also spring onions um, spring onions are another thing that can be grown pretty much all year round in a, in a polytunnel or a greenhouse um, so we can sort of giving them a good sort of uh, trial a uh, good a uh, good um, oh my goodness gracious me we can be getting <laughs> we can be getting ourselves a good um, sort of hoard on these sort of things like spring onions and lettuce because we can grow them pretty much all year round um, things like your uh, your herbs things like that your basil your dill your chervil coriander and your parsley and things like that they actually do do really well in polytunnel or your greenhouse um, I personally I don't grow things like that at the, at the allotment because it's something that I grow on the windowsill at home uh, rather than at the allotment because if I'm not down here very often uh, things like that tend to get um, a little overgrown or forgotten about so I tend to grow them them sort of things at home um, but um, there is a lot of things that I've got here a lot of seeds that I've got which I actually probably would put in this month um, just give me one second and I'll grab them So, uh, as I said, um, that's the wrong tub. Yeah, here, on, this one. So, as I say, we've got some. Uh, we've a lot of these say sow outdoors, um, but we can sow a lot of stuff in the polytunnel. We've got squash, which is quite a good one to grow. Um, we have got. We've actually got spinach, which isn't actually due to go in yet. Um, looking at the, uh, the research that I've done, uh, spinach would be going in probably later on in the year, um, August, September time. Um, I've got some Chinese cabbage. These are quite good, and these are actually going into uh, this month. These will be going in to the seed cell that the um, cell trays um, again uh, let's see what else we've got here we've got obviously some different types of lettuces these ones are Webb's wonderful lettuce crisp head um, again a uh, little gem lettuce we can probably grow these again in our polytunnels um, I have I have diff loads of different lettuces here. I've got romaine romaine balloon lettuce. Um, what else do we have here? We have some carrots and stuff. We can't really get them in this month though. Um, beetroot. 
point beetroot and stuff like that can actually be put outside. Turnips, you can still you can still plant your turnips outside. Um, leaf, uh, chard and stuff like that, beet leaf. Um, your carrots can be planted outside still. Some of them in this in, in, at this time of year. Your Amsterdam forcing, uh, your, your Nantes five, Amsterdam forcing three, and Autumn Kings. Um, Autumn King, Autumn King two can be can be planted outside. Uh, beetroot, obviously, as I said, beetroot can go outside. Um, I've actually got Chiogia, um, and I've got good old Boltardi. Now, well, what else do we have here that can go outside? I mean, if you're into your flowers and stuff like that, there's still some flowers that you can be planting out. Um, Sweet Williams um, and things like that. What else have I got? I said turnips, turnips. We can plant turnips out. And kohlrabi, that can still be going out. Um, I've actually got some kohlrabi, which is in the greenhouse at the moment, which needs to go out. Um, I have two types of kohlrabi, I've got ballot and I've got purple delicacy. Um, again your chard, um, different types of chard, you've got rainbow chard, you've got uh, your, your uh, white silver, you've got uh, also radicchio, um, palo rosso, which is this one, radicchio. That can be going out, um, that can still be going out now, you've still got time to plant. Uh, to plant those, um, and oh, I've got some other beet, some more beetroot here. Detroit to Crimson Globe, uh, so they can be going out this month as well. Um, so pretty much that that's that's pretty much covered everything. It's probably a longer video than I expected. Again, um, just I just I just ramble ramble on, don't I? Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, if, if you guys have found this really um, helpful and informative, I will do one for each month of the year, and we'll try and get more um, some some of these done, and get some. Uh, I'll, I'll do a lot more, a lot of research, and do some more um, of these videos of, sort of what we can do in the month of July, and I'll do one for August, September, October, and going forwards every month um guys anything that you think that you i could improve in these videos um then please do let me know in comments um or on twitter or on facebook um just search for raven wolf allotments and you will um find me on youtube um yeah youtube obviously um, Twitter and Facebook. I will be setting up a Instagram as well. Um, I do have a Tumblr as well, actually. Um, Raven Wolf Allotments again. Everything is Raven Wolf Allotments um, or Allotment. I think it's right, Raven Wolf Allotments. So anything like that, we can sort of be giving, uh, doing a lot of work with those. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to leave it here. Um, I, I will do a short bit to add on to the end of this. Um, I'll just show you what's going on in the greenhouse and what's going on in the polytunnel. Um, pretty much, there's not much going on on the actual plot itself other than what's actually growing. So you, you guys have seen it in the first video, first episode, um, where I showed you like the whole plot as a, one, as a, as a whole. And it, it's also pissing with rain, so... Um, I don't want to be going out and showing you around the plot in the pouring rain. Um, but yeah, I'll brave it a little to get over to the greenhouse and the polytunnel. Um, but other than that, guys, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, please do like and subscribe if you do like my content. Um, please do comment down below if you do um, have any comments to... to uh, to tell me um we got over 100 nearly 100 views on the last video which is pretty good um from my first video so um yeah guys if we can get some more viewers yeah some more viewers and subscribers guys i want to make this a regular thing so if we can get a lot of you guys coming um and subscribing and liking the videos and commenting 
please do comment because I will go through your comments. I will reply. Um, again, if you contact me on Facebook, if you contact me on Twitter, um, if you contact me on Tumblr and Instagram when I set it up, I will go through and I will um, I will reply to your comments. Um, also, guys, if you have any questions uh, for me, please do drop them down below. Um, I'll always try and answer your questions and also any ideas for future videos. Um, as I say, I'm always looking for ideas for videos. I do watch a lot of other YouTubers um, and uh, try and get some ideas from them for what they do. Um, so yeah, um, like uh, like Joe digging for dinner, he's a great guy, um, and uh, I got a lot of lot of um, inspiration from from Joe um, for uh, what to do. Um, but um, there's also a lot of other you. If you're into your, um, oh, what's it called? You know, dig. If you're into your no dig, then you need to check out a guy called Charles Dowding, and he's really, really good at the uh, no dig stuff. And there's James, uh, James Scott Cameron or Cameron Scott. Uh, is also really good. Um, and there's actually a series, even a series on there, beginner, beginner, uh, gardening for beginners, um, which is quite a good series. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, do um, as I say, do like, like my uh, do like comment and subscribe if you like the com content um, and also please do let me down know down below whether you um, if there's anything that you would um, like me to do going forward anything you'd like to, me to discuss um, any questions that you have guys if if we get quite a few questions I will do uh, a Q&A video um, and try and do some uh, Sort of just to try and help you guys out and just try and answer your questions. Um, I will answer your questions anyway down in the comments, but I will do a, a Q and A video so that will help other people out that are having the same problems as you. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, thank you for watching and um, please, 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 please do, you know, what I mean, subscribe or just like the video. Um, it gives me. A lot more. Um, I don't know how to what to say. What it is? It gives me a lot more inspiration. A lot more. Um, idea, ideas, and it gives me more um, motivation to make more videos. Um, but I understand that I'm a new YouTuber. Um, and you guys probably know all your other YouTubers and things like that. So it's, uh, I know YouTube isn't an easy thing to get into. And, but this is something that I'm trying to sort of just, uh, just to try and help you guys out. Um, there's probably better YouTubers out there, better gardening YouTubers that know more than I do. Um, but as I say, I try to do some videos that are going to try and help you guys. But yeah, I will show you what's going on in the greenhouse and the polytunnel because there's a few bits come up in the polytunnel which weren't there um, the other day when I did the video on Sunday. Um, so we will check out check out that. Um, but other than that, guys, I shall see you all. Um, well, I'll be talking to you in a minute because I'm going to go into the greenhouse and the polytunnel. But I will end the video here and I will attach that video onto the end. Um, or I'll do it as a separate video. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you, and um, I shall see you all on the other side. So, guys, yeah, I thought I'd uh, just show you what was going on in the greenhouse in the polytunnel. Uh, this is what's uh, in the greenhouse at the moment. Um, it's not really changed much from the other day. Uh, the leaks have gone out, um, and we've got pretty much all of this stuff down here still. We need to thin some of this out. Some of these tomatoes need to be thinned out a little bit. Um, that pepper's getting a bit dwarfed down there on its own. Um, so I might put them in a grow bag in the polytunnel or something like that. Um, pretty much this is what we've got going on here. Um, still a lot of this needs to go out. These are those. These are the cold rabi I was telling you about. Um, you know, cold rabi ballot. 
Um, we've still got some of these onions, but um, I don't know if we're putting them out. There's some beetroot there as well, um, but again, I'm not sure about them. Uh, not sure what we're doing with these corn yet, whether we're going to keep them in here or we're going to take them outside. Yeah, probably take them outside. Um, beautiful weather. Not. So let's get down into the polytunnel. Right, so obviously we've still got our... Um, courgettes down here. Um, now, I do think that we may have some... Uh, yeah, I think we're starting to get some of you guys to say about the uh, close-ups, but I'm going to show you what we've got here. We have actually got a flower head coming up. Um, a couple of flower heads coming up in there. Uh, on all of these. Um, again over here we've got our pumpkins and our squash and our mel um, melons, no, not melons, and marrows. So uh, these, are, these are absolutely flying at the moment. Um, so again we'll just see where we go with those. Um, and then here, this is our little few things that we put into seed the other day. Now we have some sunflowers, Italian white sunflowers. We have uh, cannellini beans. They have started to come up. We've got a couple of them coming up. Um, uh, there's probably even another one there. Yep, there we go. There's another one just there. Um, we have a snap pea. We've got one of those coming up at the moment. Uh, your normal pea, uh, normal peas, her screen shaft. There's actually a couple of those coming up there as well. Um, Climbing beans are flying, cucumbers again, they're absolutely flying, um, and carrots, we still haven't got anything off of them, they're the Autumn King for, uh, carrots, um, but those were out of date seeds, so we'll see what happens with them anyway, um, but they have not actually made an appearance or anything as of yet, um, but like I say guys, we will try and do... Um, I will do more of these videos and try and get more sort of uh, tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, as I say, I did. I've got a uh, weed membrane across the bottom of my polytunnel, and I'm using raised beds uh, rather than actually planting directly into the ground. Um, again, while we're out here, we've got our our onions in there and we can't really see but and also these are our uh, leeks which are still they've still got their holes and they're still sitting there in their holes um, and then guys I'll just I'll just go back the other side of this you can see a lot of these weeds coming up now where well, we've, 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 cut, we've dug, dug this over but now with the rain and that the weeds are absolutely coming up so that's uh, the view of the plot really because uh, I know a lot of you guys said that the, the walking around and doing all the uh, you didn't really know whereabouts I was on the plot so that's that's the rest of the plot but I am going to get inside now because it's absolutely chucking it down Oops. try not to fall over would be a good idea too um, there's strawberry plants over there as well um, these dahlias are doing well as well in these plant, in these trays. Um, hanging baskets. So, guys, yeah. I'm going to go now because I'm going to get back home. Um, and uh, I should upload this video. But, uh, yeah, these are the, the other stuff that we've got here as well. Uh, a lot of cabbages and uh, stuff like this. These are sort of dumb stuff that's been going out in August and September. One sec, get that on the floor. Um, things like these, uh, August to September, your onions. Uh, spinach, perpetual spinach. Yeah, again, August. Spring onions. Uh, Swiss chard. Another lettuce, another lettuce. As the lettuce we can grow all year round, pretty much. Uh, radishes. There we go, they've got the pak choy there. Um, we could actually be doing these in uh, our cells 
um, this month. Another cabbage there. Some more spring onions. I've got loads of spring onions. Uh, red clover. That's quite good for your, your ground. Uh, mixed lettuce leaves, radishes again. More spring onions, broccoli, uh, radish, some sweet peas. They can be going in September, I believe. Yeah. Um, lettuce again. More lettuce, salad leaf. Uh, more spring onions, some more lettuce. There we go. So that's the sort of things that we'll be putting in anyway. But yeah, guys. Um, so I shall see you. I shall see you all again soon. Um, and um, yeah, guys. Thank you for joining me. And as I said, do give me a um, give me a comment and let me know what you think of the videos. And also uh, let me know what you um, think I should do next as well. What other other things I should do. Um, and any questions or anything like that you have that I can answer for you. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me. And uh, please do like and subscribe if you like the uh, content. Um, and other than that, um, I shall see you all the next time.